To start, I'm going to take off my wheel with a 19 millimeter socket, take off all five of your lug nuts. And take off your wheel. All right, now with the wheel off, I'm going to start by removing this outer tie rod and nut, 15 millimeter socket. Remove the nut. Take this off. Now the hammer, hammer right here, that'll break the tie rod stud off of the knuckle. Needs more. There it goes. With a 32 millimeter socket, let's take the axle nut off. These are pretty tight, so use a big breaker bar or a powerful air gun. Now make sure this breaks free from the hub, which this one is pretty stuck in there. So, all right, it's not moving. Sometimes you can gently tap them, but let's get a center punch and hammer it out. You don't want to hit on the edge of the threads because you'll ruin them and then you'll have trouble getting the nut back on, so that's why you want to use a punch. There we go, it's starting to move. Move my hand so you can see. That's exactly what you want. Next, I want to take the brakes off, so I'm going to take the caliper with the bracket off as one unit. It'll be a lot easier. Two 18 millimeter bolts at the back, remove both of them. There's one, leave this in a couple threads, that way it holds the caliper on while I remove the second one. Okay. Now take both of these off, hold on to your caliper so it doesn't fall off. Slide it off the rotor, make sure the rotor doesn't fall. And then I'm going to put this up onto the strut here. I'm going to grab a bungee cord and tie it but this is basically where I'm going to leave it because the knuckle's all coming off, so I can't put it anywhere here. Now take the rotor off, set that aside. So this is optional, but I think it'll make things easier. Removing this backing plate, it's just held on by three 10 millimeter bolts. And if you have the possibility to do so, a lot of times these bolts are rotted, but if you can, I would suggest removing this. One, two, and three. This will make things easier once we uh, go over to the press to press the bearing off. And also, now you can clearly see the ABS sensor, which you can disconnect by pressing down on this connector here, sliding this up and out of your way. Now let's take the pinch bolt out for the ball joint. This is a T55 Torx head, and I like to hold this with my breaker bar um, and then use my 18 millimeter socket on the nut side. Okay, take this bolt out. Now this is a new control arm with a new ball joint, so it's most likely gonna just pop right out. But sometimes um, if it's stuck in there, you might have to apply some rust penetrant and uh, a little bit more force than I'm applying right now. But basically, you just wanna pry it out of the knuckle here. Um, a lot of times it'll get stuck like this just because the knuckle wants to twist at a weird angle. There it goes. That's separated. Pull the control arm down, push the knuckle out of your way, pull the ball joint up, make sure the boot doesn't get smashed in there. Now with a 15 millimeter, I'm gonna disconnect this pinch bolt that squeezes the knuckle onto the strut. This is the last thing holding the knuckle into the car, so be careful. It's not gonna fall out, but just be careful. If you have a lot of trouble removing these, it's probably because they're seized in there. So spray with some rust penetrant and you can apply some heat. Just be very careful because this is a gas loaded shock. Take this out. Let's push the axle through. Pull the knuckle out. There we go. Set that aside. And now we can take a hammer, drive the knuckle down and off of the strut. Pay attention to your ball joint boot. You don't want to damage it. And also don't hammer your brake hose, obviously. There it is. There's your knuckle. Take the ABS sensor out with a, 20, with a T25 Torx bit. 
I, the reason I want to do it is because it protrudes out the back here and when I press the hub and the bearing out, I don't want to accidentally damage the sensor. So, like I said, T25 Torx bit. Take this bolt out. And now let's grab a pair of pliers, try to twist that out of there. Perfect. Twisting it usually breaks it free. You can lift up at the same time. Here's the ABS sensor, set this aside safely so you don't break it. I have my knuckle set up in the press here. I'm making sure that it's nice and flat and even. It's important that you don't press sideways, otherwise whatever adapter you have here is just gonna get shot out to the side. I have a socket. I have a 30 millimeter socket that just happens to fit on the hub surface here. Uh, this is what you wanna press on. We don't press the bearing out yet. We wanna get the hub out first. Center that up and just to make up the space, I have this spacer piece here. Let's bring the press down. Okay, make sure it's all nice and centered. Okay, let's apply some pressure and the hub should come out through the bottom. That's a good noise. And it's coming right out, perfect. it comes. Take this out, take this out, take the knuckle off, the bearing separated, that's completely normal. Here's the hub, we'll have to get this inner race off of the hub to reuse it. And now we can continue to removing the bearing. Now I have my knuckle on my workbench and I want to get the snap ring out, that's, this is what holds your wheel bearing in. So I'm going to spray it down with some rust penetrant to hopefully loosen up some of the rust and lubricate it. There we go. And I'm gonna try the snap ring pliers. It might not work first try though. You'll need a set of very good snap ring pliers. Yeah, that's pretty locked up in there. So in order to free it up a little bit, I'm gonna grab a chisel and a hammer and try to hammer it to loosen up the ends a little bit. I'm gonna go right here where this ear gets larger and just gently hammer it. There we go, it's spinning, that's perfect. I'll keep going for a little bit just to work that rust penetrant in there. So now let's try the snap ring pliers again. Make sure they're seated down in there. Lift this up. I don't have a screwdriver, but I have my chisel, so I'm gonna use that, pry the snap ring out, and then grab a set of pliers. Okay, let's grab some pliers, grab this snap ring, and now you kind of want to just twist it out of here. trying to walk it out of where it's locked in. There it goes. Here's your snap ring. I strongly recommend replacing these. If you absolutely have to reuse it, you can, but again, I recommend replacing them. Now to press the bearing out. Again, set it up in the press and you'd wanna go the same way that you went before. I have an old bearing here that fits perfectly here. That'll help me press my existing bearing out and a spacer block to make up the distance here. and. I mean, you don't have to use another bearing. You can use a big socket or anything that you might have that'll press this down and out. That's the point of this. So let's bring the press back down. Let's apply some pressure. Okay, and my spacer is basically bottomed out, so I'll have to figure something different out, but the bearing is coming out, so that's good. So we'll release pressure, resituate, and continue. Okay, so I put a little uh, spacer piece here, another spacer on top. I'm pressing on the inner race of the bearing. Let's apply pressure and finish driving this bearing out. Might make a loud noise when it finally pops out because it's gonna shoot out the bottom, 
but I guess at least it comes out. All right, it's working. I can see it coming out the bottom. Oh, there it goes. Let's get the knuckle off of here. We'll clean some things up, especially the groove where the snap ring sits. You want that to be nice and clean. And maybe that ridge back there, and we'll get ready for the new wheel bearing. So I want to remove this dust seal here um, first before I do anything else, just to get this out of our way. Oh, I guess I didn't even need to activate the air chisel. It falls right out. And now we need to take this bearing off, or the race, I should say. This is the inner race off of the bearing. And there are multiple methods that you can um, take this off. What I'm going to do is take a cutting wheel, make a relief cut here, take my air chisel, which you can also just use a manual chisel and a hammer. It's the same thing. It's just that this works a little faster. Break the bearing free, or the race. I keep calling it a bearing, but it's the inner race. Break it here, and that'll release it and relieve pressure off the hub. Then you can drive it straight out. The other method would be if you have oxygen acetylene torch with a very fine pointed tip, you can put this in your vise on a socket like this, and then heat up just this ridge here as you're spinning it at about this speed right here. And after about 30 seconds of heating it, this will get really hot, expand, and just drop right off of here. Of course, the disadvantage with that is your whole hub is gonna get pretty hot after that, so be careful. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to cut it and drive it off. All right, just gonna make a little cut here. Be careful that you don't cut into the hub. good for now. Let's try that. We're done with our cut here. Take a chisel. I'm going to try the hand chisel first before I use the air hammer. That felt like it just split. Let's try and drive it off of here. Oh yeah, that's it. That's all it takes. Now sometimes you do have to make multiple cuts, but this is Basically all you need, very minimal damage to this. I nicked it here and here, but this is totally fine. It's not gonna damage anything, it's not gonna hurt it. I might be able to sand this down a little bit to make it smooth, uh, but either way, this is the trick to it. You cut it, relief pressure, it splits open, slide it right off. I wanna clean out this groove here where the snap ring sits, that way it can seat itself properly. You definitely want that to lock in well. This is basically the only thing other than just pressure. Uh, that is holding your wheel bearing in. So I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and scrape off everything that's in there. Use a rag to wipe it. And then put some brake parts cleaner on a rag. And wipe off any oils, debris, anything that might be stuck on there. Clean up the rest of the surface. That should be ready for install. So I have my old bearing here and I'm gonna use it to press it on a little bit later, but I'm gonna start out with just a flat block because at this point, this bearing can kind of walk around everywhere. It's important to press the new bearing on the outer race not on the inner race or especially not on the dust seal. Um, anything other than the outer race will damage it. So I'm gonna put this flat block right here. This is flush across all surfaces. I'm gonna go up with my press a little bit to make this fit, perfect. Okay, make sure this is flat and centered. Let's apply some pressure. Watch it as it goes down to make sure it goes even. There we go, that's perfect. You shouldn't need a ton of pressure to drive this in, nowhere near as much as you needed to pull it out or to press it out, I guess. And as long as it goes even, and smooth, you're doing great. If it starts requiring a lot of pressure all of a sudden, which means it's binding up, something's wrong, it's most likely going in crooked, in which case you have to back off and try to fix the issue. And as I get it bottomed out here, it's not actually fully bottomed out in the knuckle, it's just the spacer piece that's hitting the knuckle right here, so I'm gonna back that off, remove this bottom piece, and put in my old bearing. 
this is what's going to help me press the outer ridge in or the outer race and not the inner race. Okay, we're getting close here. Apply some pressure again. There we go, it's going down. And no, this race will not press itself into the knuckle. Don't worry about it. That right there bottomed out. Give it one more pump for good measure. Release pressure. Pull the press up. Take your adapters out and everything. And your wheel bearing is freshly installed. Everything still spins as it should. Now let's get the hub installed. Now don't forget about your snap ring. I'm reusing my original one. Um, I don't have a new one and this is still in good condition. Of course, if you damage yours by removing it or when removing it, go ahead and replace it. Set it down into its groove and to ensure that it actually seats in, I'm gonna take this little chisel, be careful because you don't want to chisel into your bearing. Just tap it into place, as you can see, it just expanded so it was not fully seated. Just go around, give it some gentle taps. There you go, that should be good. Now let's put the hub on. I changed up my press situation a little bit. The way I'm gonna press this hub on is I'm gonna put it flat down on this block. Obviously I can't just put it straight like this because it's gonna press the studs right out of the hub. And make sure it's sitting as centered as possible. And then I'm gonna take the knuckle with the new, new bearing that we just pressed in and you can't press the hub straight through without holding either of the centers because uh, if I press it on this way, this race is gonna pop right out as it's trying to press it in uh, to itself. So uh, I'm gonna put the knuckle on like this, nice and centered, put a little spacer piece in here that holds the inner bearing, and or I, I guess presses on it. This to take up the space, make sure everything is as flat as possible. Center it all up. Once pressure gets applied, it'll kind of hold itself in, but you do want to make sure that it's straight. If it presses at an angle, it'll get bound up in there and that is not good. Let's continue pressing it and everything should go according to plan. Oh, there we go. It just straightened itself out. That's okay. I'm spinning this as I go to ensure that it's not binding up. A lot of times if the bearing does bind up from the hub going in crooked, it'll stop spinning. So obviously that's a bad sign. It's gonna keep going till it bottoms out. And it's actually gonna bottom out right here. I can still spin this, that's perfect. Give it one extra pump for good measure. Release pressure. Release pressure, there we go. Let's check it, make sure it is actually fully seated. Um, looks like it is. That's exactly how it was before. So, remove it. Now let's reinstall the ABS sensor. Make sure it bottoms out completely and put your little bolt back in, snug it up. Perfect. Now let's reinstall the knuckle. Okay, so I cleaned up the strut a little bit with some very fine sandpaper to remove the surface rust and I lubricated it with some rust penetrant. That way, hopefully, the knuckle will slide on a little bit easier. I'm going to use a rubber mallet on the bottom of it and try to slide it up. So as I drive this knuckle up, I want to pay attention to this slot here. The uh, tab has to line up with the slot and the tab will actually go into the slot a little bit. So I'll just make sure that as it's going up, it's actually lined up. Otherwise, it, once, once it's up here, it'll be very difficult to turn. So you're better off trying to line it up um, while it's still towards the bottom of the strut. That 
it's lining up perfectly. Let's continue pushing it up until this part bottoms out up against that. I heard an audible difference in the hammering. That means it's bottomed out. So that's perfect. Let's put the through bolt in. Let's put the pinch bolt in. Make sure it starts in on the threads and tighten it up. Then we'll torque it to 59 foot pounds. Okay, let's torque it. Right there, perfect. Before I put the axle through, I'm gonna put a little bit of ADCs on the splines. This will help it not get stuck in the future like it was when I initially took it out this time. Not a lot, but a small thin layer um, should help. Let's pull the knuckle out, try to slide the axle through. There we go. Fits into the hub perfectly. And now to actually fully line it up, I'm gonna have to pull the ball joint down. Make sure the axle goes through the splines. Line up the ball joint and give this a push. Should want to slide right in. Let's grab a rubber mallet and help it along. Hammer on the control arm, not the uh, ball joint. Perfect. Let's put this through bolt here. Um, put the nut on, tighten it up, snug it up, and torque it to 61 foot pounds. I'm gonna have to hold the bolt so it doesn't spin as I torque it. Right there, perfect. Before we put on the backing plate, let's plug in the ABS sensor. It clicked. Reattach the backing plate. Oops, it's crooked. Okay. Perfect. Put the axle nut on, snug it up, and torque it to 59 foot-pounds, and then an additional 90 degrees. I'm gonna use my impact gun to drive it down. I'm not tightening it with it. I'm gonna use the torque wrench, but this is just gonna go a little faster. Okay, let's torque it. 59 foot-pounds, and then an additional 90 degrees. I'm gonna hold the hub with my pry bar. That way it doesn't spin. All right, now let's do the degrees. Okay, that's about 45. Let's go another 45. That's bottomed out right there. Let's get the tie rod back in. Put the nut on, snug it up, torque it to 35 foot pounds. That's it. Now, before we reinstall the rotor, I like to put a little bit of anti-seize on the surface of the hub, mainly on this outer lip here and the inner lip. That's where the hub, the uh, rotor sits. If you have a lot of rust buildup and debris here, you wanna make sure you wire brush it, clean it up. That way the rotor has a nice flat surface to sit on. It's important, because otherwise you'll get braking issues. And just a little bit of a thin layer of anti-seize will do for this. You don't need a lot. Now, let's get the rotor, put it back on. Okay, let's clean up the surface. It's got some grease and fingerprints on it, and you want to take that off with some brake parts cleaner and a rag. Take your caliper, slide it over the rotor, line it up with the bolt holes on the back side, and start in both of your caliper mounting bolts. There's one. Two, snug them up, and then torque them to 129 foot-pounds. That's one. And that's two. Let's put the wheel back on. Start on all of your lug nuts, snug them up, and torque them to 100 foot-pounds. 